So Tom, thank you so much for joining us, man. I mean, you, you, your background is awesome from what we found so far on YouTube, your websites, elsewhere. We wanted to kick it off by just asking you to give a little bit of background. We know you started in dentistry. You were in school for almost 10 years. I mean, what's going on with that? Give us some insight. Firstly, thank you guys for having me. Um, it's always a pleasure to firstly let's meet people and uh, be on people's shows. It's like I, I can never, I never kind of see past that. Is like how lucky I am to, to to do that. So yeah, so so thankful for you guys to have me um, and willing to share my story with uh, with you and your audience. So thank you guys. Thank you for joining us, man. We're we're super happy to have you. Yeah, well, just so to kind of answer your question, um, like what is my story? You're you're correct. I have had probably one of the weirdest backgrounds um at least i know of my friends uh, and people that i know uh, i've pretty much done every job going out there i've been a nurse i've been a um i've worked in hotels i've been a chef i've been in tech for the last like six years uh i'm now doing youtube i've been a dentist i've uh I obviously always go back to my first ever job being a paper boy and having a paper round like most people, but I don't even know if that exists anymore. Yeah, uh, so that's, how, that's next. That's how old I am. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've done a bit of everything. Um, I started making videos uh, about six, six or so years ago. And my first video was actually a video of me creating a filling on a fake tooth. And that video has slowly crept up towards I think a million views now. Um, yeah, it, it it kind of just took off uh, years ago. And that was when um, there weren't many people making uh, as much content as there are now. And especially in the medical field, due to consent and all of the issues around that, there wasn't much content going on. And uh, my personal interest at the time when I was a dentist, I was uh, I loved to educate people. I loved working. I did courses. I would help as a clinical lecturer on courses. And I specialized in kind of what's considered minimally invasive aesthetic dentistry. Those are probably the longest words I've thrown out in a while now, actually. Uh, I can barely remember what they mean. Um, but from memory, that is uh, helping people achieve the smile of their dreams through the, doing the least damage possible, um, if that make if that makes sense, um, and yeah, I specialized in that, and I worked as a as a lecturer. I would go around the world. I was in San Francisco um, in my last year of working, and I was lecturing there at the, the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. And then very quickly, I realized that that wasn't what I wanted to do for forty years, which was look at teeth, <laughs> um, and decided it was at that point I was like oh shit what the hell am I going to do now and I had been at college for you're right I'd been at college for seven years I did two degrees I did biomedical sciences to start off with and then I did dentistry after that um, I was very lucky because my first degree I managed to do a slightly shortened dentistry course of four years um, so I count myself lucky from that perspective um, and yeah I became a dentist had a couple of years practicing and realized this is f fucking shit um mm -hmm. and despite being despite being really keen i was very very keen really interested um people were very surprised when i announced that i was going to be leaving i had made some really good progress within the industry in quite a short amount of time uh but i was just like this is the the world is just seems like such a place of uh, massive abundance and opportunity and I just felt as a clinician you you just completely miss out on that um, and so I, I was like fuck it this is the the least investment I'll ever have in this profession so I'm mm -hmm. going to take the risk now when I'm youngish kind of mid-20s and see what else is out there um, and so I did so I moved uh, I'd always been interested in tech but I'd never really managed to scratch that itch because I had my eyes on the prize of working in the medical field. Uh, so I started working for startups um, as an intern, as I was part-time dentistry, dentisting, whatever, the, whatever you would mm -hmm. call it. Um, and worked in, I worked in a startup that was within the Google um, Accelerator program, a couple of Accelerator programs, just helped out with their teams for free. 
for a few months before I managed to bag myself a job at a full tech startup, a full time job, um, working in sales and marketing um, for a for a tech company that sold um, really cool, unique tech toys for um, for children. Um, mm. And that's that was really my first step into technology, and really ha- has resulted in where I am now, which is kind of wanting to be at the forefront of the Web three movement and um, era. Right. Now back to when you were doing dentistry and you created that, uh, the, the filling video that we were just speaking of, did you find yourself wanting to create content at that time? It sounds like you kind of wanted to fill a niche um, and you really did. So did you ever want to continue to expand on that content creator path or was it more so of just you wanted to do something that wasn't out there and wasn't available to other people like yourself? Yeah, I think that I had uh, th- keep in mind that YouTube had, uh, had had launched when I was in my like junior, senior, co- senior years in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, so back in like 2006, five, that, those kind of years that was kicking off and I I had made my mind up at that point that I was going to be a medical professional. And mm-hmm. so it uh, for those first kind of like, t- you know, five, six, seven, eight years, um, I was like blinders on, just focused on that. But I, underneath the surface was always just this feeling that I wanted to put myself out there and create stuff. Um, what I found was when I graduated dentistry, I... I found that through education. So I was obsessed with photography um, uh, and demonstrating, I suppose, how to do things. So I was, Mm. that was kind of my, um, that was the, the, that was the way I kind of did, did, I kind of did that was to put myself out there by, by create, creating. And then YouTube was like, um, that was my first test of creating video. And, I think it was a good example of actually I grew up never thinking that I had an artistic skill set or an artistic ability. And actually, I think it was the first time where I realized, shit, actually, you know, I'm at, I am, my passion was creating art within a mouth. It was like Mm. creating nature, recreating nature, which was not what we were taught uh, as dentists at dental school. It was like functionality is the key. Right. yeah, so I was making these like little mini sculptures and microscopic sculptures in people's mouths, and I turned, you know, turned out to be pretty good at it. Um, and I suppose that first video was like the thing that was like shit. That was really good fun. And then um, since then, uh, I have made multiple attempts at starting my YouTube journey, um, and I think this is quite common. I've seen this with a few other kind of a uh, few other YouTubers. It's like they've 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 just they've tried to do things but their their passion for creation and their passion of whatever it else they have other passion within life it never crossed at the right time to allow them to continue making and creating at a consistent ba- on a consistent basis right uh, so that's that was my uh that's my kind of like journey with youtube if you look at my channel i've i've created for uh, I've, I've yeah i've created here and there for the last like seven or so years um and now uh i've for the past kind of a couple of months have been creating specifically on um with a tech focus uh aligning with this new wave of technology that we are at the front of um and i count myself very lucky that i'm i've kind of i'm there and I also feel as if all of the skills that I developed as a creator over the past you know, five, six, seven years, whether it's video editing, uh, audio editing, whatever it may be, I can now deploy those skills, um, understanding how the YouTube algorithm works, being able to market myself generally, whether that's having a website, um, networking. I feel like I'm in a position where I can deploy all of those skills at the same time um, and hopefully widen my reach and my ability to help educate others. Love that. And yeah, just just to go back a little bit, I want to touch on your journey when you were still in dentistry right prior to your launch of your creative career. 
um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were in development to produce your own medical tools. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, I was. Um, um, I, uh, I'll preface this by saying that the reason that I did that was because I read a book which is called The Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. You guys mm -hmm. familiar with that? Yep. Yeah. Um, and I read that probably in my I think second or third year of dental school when I was in doing in dentistry school. And I think that was the real like the spark that kind of made me realize okay well it it it, it wasn't the it wasn't the necessarily the um you can live four hours you can work four hours a week and have an incredible lifestyle it was the philosophical perspective of the most most valuable asset that you own is time and your time on this planet is limited and it's very easy when you're focusing on a path to forget forget about that but I read that book in my second year and I was like fuck like this is this is true like like time is your most precious asset and alongside health which is again one of my my beliefs is that health and time are the two things that you need to look after the most um uh, and yeah I suppose like I it, it, the, move, moving on to the what that what that book was about was it was about how do you create your fun your freedom your time freedom and mm -hmm. the the methodology that tim ferris used was creation of a, a muse a muse project uh, something that could be a cash flow producing business um and i was like i have an, a, a very specific interest in this uh, area of dentistry and I know that there is a need and a requirement of these specific tools but I don't think there's anyone out there who are creating them very well so I went through the process of designing these surgical instruments having them um, designed in like Pakistan where the, most of the surgical instruments in the world are created hmm. and uh, I f kind of finished that process I had them almost ready to go and the last step was for me to press the order a thousand units button mm -hmm. the problem is i didn't have the cash to order a thousand units <laughs> um and i was like it was at the, at the same time as i was like I, do i really want to have ties to this profession um because that would would have been a requirement to make it successful i would have had to stay mm -hmm. within the medical field and by that point, I'd love, lost all of any sort of love for it. Um, so I decided to pop them back in my cupboard. So I think they're in my parents' house somewhere. Um, but yeah, that was my process of, uh, of going through that. I had, that was the first time I had set up a company, um, gone through the process of understanding how a business is formed, what makes up the foundations of a business. Um, and I love that process. It was it was amazing, um, but I definitely do not regret deciding to leave it there um, and, and move on because uh, yeah, otherwise I probably wouldn't be here with you guys. Right, and yeah. then just piggybacking off of that, um, one of your next ventures was Viable. I I would love to hear a little bit about that, and maybe you can give us some insight onto the time span between when you decided okay i don't want to pull the trigger on this maybe dentistry isn't for me and then your envelopment into this really your your first leaps into the content creator space i would argue yeah so i um uh, I, I made the decision to move into the tech sector far i suppose like five years ago and at that time, I recognized that I probably needed to be str pretty strategic in how I played things out, uh, knowing that I didn't have any hard skill sets. Um, so I went into sales and marketing roles at a number of different companies um, and worked in startups of different sizes so that I could mm -hmm. get an idea of how different size companies are run, um, how the nuances that go alongside different size, being in different size companies, um, which I knew would be very 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 useful for where, where i wanted to ultimately get to which is uh, uh, owning my own company 
and owning my own, owning my own entity of some sort. So I spent the last few years doing that. And then two years, I think, well, two and a half years ago, I was working, um, I was working in tech startups that I was a kind of, a, I suppose, an account manager for most of the largest retail brands in the world, um, specifically in the kind of luxury retail category. Um, in the UK, we have luxury retail stores, business, businesses like Harrods and Selfridges. Mm -hmm. If you're from, yeah, may, may, may have heard of those. They're, they're kind of the luxury, luxury retail. And I realized that I wanted to have full ownership of my kind of path. And it was at that time I was working with my business partner. We decided to found a company called Viable Beauty, um, which was an e-commerce brand that helped consumers get access to sustainably led and climate conscious beauty brands. Um, and we started that two years ago and um, had a it kind of coincided in a bit of a shit time because the the whole pandemic thing happened. Mm -hmm. And we also had a beautiful piece of um, kind of po political um, I would say bullshittery in that we decided to leave the European <laughs> Union, um, Britain, and uh, that screwed everything up when it came to importing and exporting goods in and out of the country. Oh. So that was a shit show that ended up making it uh, very difficult for my my company Viable to su survive. Um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of put, put put us in a position where I've now, I'm in the process of moving out of that business. Um, my focus now is on full-time on content creation and working with the most exciting brands in the specifically NFT space at the moment. Um, so that's, that's now my, my, my full-time focus and my, my co-founder, my business partner is going to be taking on Viable f from me and focusing on, on moving that forward, which I'm really happy about. Um, it's been a great, it's been a very, a uh, very good couple of years where I feel like I've learned a ton and have built up a load of a load of skills. And I now feel like I'm in a position, like I said, at the, the start to really deploy all of those skills. I That's love awesome. that. John, I will bogart all, uh, to all my questions and I'll prioritize them. So please, I'll have you jump in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm actually very curious. We're actually in pretty similar spaces. Um, I started uh my most recent show about three months ago um and that's my kind of full-time main project so i'm curious like web3 specifically there's lots of for every creator there's lots of different revenue streams but i think it, it, specifically with web3 content there's lots of different possibilities as a business how are you viewing like okay here's the revenue streams that I think will matter to be able to like build this like brand and, and business in the web three content space. Yeah. So the way I'm thinking about things at the moment is that, um, first, firstly, with the caveat that we, this term gets thrown around quite a bit at the moment, which is the we're, we're early, uh, phrase. Now I agree. Um, I agree on that. Um, and I kind of like, I think that that comes with, um, a little bit of an asterisk to that in that we are early um, a lot of comparisons get made to the the dot-com bubble and the dot-com boom in the two, uh, two around the late 90s 2000 um, I think that we have to remember and this is to be honest this is obvious information just moves infinitely faster than it did in 2099 and so um, what we see as maybe a year in 1999, the amount of flow of information that is that genuinely is a month. These these like uh, now, it, it is so fast moving. People have access to way more information than they ever did back then. They are able to innovate, create, and market and bring to market products faster than ever, and we're seeing that. And we, sadly, in the NFT space specifically. We are seeing that um, that ability to do that to create uh, rapidly. We're seeing that being abused by people who recognise they can make a ton of money and ride that wave at the moment. Now, 
what 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 when it comes to me and the way I'm looking at content creation, um, I see uh, uh, with things moving so rapidly, um, I think that my biggest focus is focusing on um, specific, just very specific niches. And at the moment, I'm not thinking past too much, uh, thinking too much past making sure I'm speaking to interesting people with good backgrounds, strong backgrounds, and um, looking at opportunities as they come, disregarding opportunities that don't seem high quality, uh, and just being consistent with production of content. Uh, so I, when it comes to my revenue streams, um, at the moment, it is just who can I who, who can I speak to that I think is going to ha have um, something there on the cusp of creating something very unique and special. And how can I either help them in that journey, whether that's a deploy, whether that's um, my skill set helping uh, helping them in any way I can with it. P perhaps it's reaching a wider audience, um, giving them uh, them as a business business a platform to speak from. And then, um, yeah, it, it, I, I, I'm my plans are to to become a builder uh, as rapidly as I can. Um, that. Uh, my my belief though is that to and this is to be honest my biggest learning from last year and the last couple of years when we've been in lockdowns throughout the world we haven't been able to network we haven't been able to meet people um i i've i i, I am now changing my mindset in that uh, i'm aiming to surround myself with the brightest people understanding that i have a uh, i have a lack of of a technical skill set my skill set is from a brand building and sales and marketing perspective so yeah my, my my plan is to just put myself out there as much as i can meet as many people as possible have as much fun as possible this year hopefully meeting people in real in real life and um at the same time just developing my community um, and nurturing that 100 it's, it's it's essentially like the product first mindset right mm -hmm. yeah absolutely I love that. like yeah p product first um and providing value like that is uh, as you know like john you, it, it's always 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 about how can you provide value and i one of the i suppose things again one thing that i learned from last year and m maybe mistakes from the past couple of years is the importance of differentiation and that is something that I uh, I, th I think that every content creator needs to really um, understand is what is their point of differentiation because that is what's going to help them stick out within a, a pool of other content creator creators. And I've been quite specific in that I've tried to create, um, not create, but I've tried to make sure I'm as, as myself as possible, but pushing the edge pushing that out a little bit so that i'm kind of creating a little bit of friction enough for there to be like hmm, this person's a bit different um because uh, yeah there's a, i see a lot of content creators who um perhaps this is a learning that i've had from kind of following youtube for years and trying to understand its algorithm S super important to pe keep people engaged and um be different from Hundred percent, and uh, I, I'm curious if we could we could wrap a little bit on the so for creators, right? Like me, I have a comedy show has absolutely nothing to do with Web three, but there's so many opportunities for me as a creator with Web three, whether it's making an NFT or or otherwise. So I'm just curious if you could uh, wrap a little bit about how you think creators who are not in the web three space could utilize web three to, you know, either make more income or just like make this a more sustainable, like full-time career of creating. Yeah. The, the, the absolute fucking truth to things now is that this is, this is the, the panacea that artists and creators have been begging for, for since the beginning of time. Yeah. It's here. It's here. <laughs> So the 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 question is um, uh, is should should be okay. Well, we have this relatively fledgling technology, but the way 
technology uh, and information moves, as we talked about, it moves rapidly. The most important thing right now is that artists and creators who may be hearing the word NFT thrown around, they, uh, and you guys, you guys familiar with, you guys, do you guys like, are you a Gary V? You guys, Gary V, Maxis? That's how we met, I think, actually, <laughs> right, Luke? Yeah, we, we, funny enough, we met, uh, that's, it's a longer story for another time, but basically I was trying to get a job through Vayner Media and had to produce a fake company and John just so happened to follow my fake company. And then we started chatting and ended up working together for the past two years. So mm-hmm. shout out Gary V. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that's so, that's so sick to hear. Um, yeah. Like, so he's, you know, he permeates everything at the moment. Um, but he, it, it, the, the important thing is that the like artists understand that they're, they may be hearing this word getting thrown around. And Mm -hmm. in the last, yesterday it happened to me in the, I was on my, one of my group WhatsApp chats and a couple of, I basically, my boys found out that I make YouTube videos on NFTs and they're (laughs) like, and you know, my assumption is that I'm just going to get chewed out. They're going to be throwing shit at me, but no, I just got a load of DMS being like, dude, I didn't know you were doing this. Like I did, like I've been following NFTs for the past month. Like I'm, uh, but I've like, st- I'm struggling at find- for finding projects. Like I don't, you know, I got positive, a lot of positivity as opposed to this. Sh- yeah. Which is, which is great. And it's, um, demonstrative of, of the, actually, I think people are realizing that, ah, they, there is the people that have made the decision to go from pff, NFTs bullshit to, I should probably just learn a little bit about this. And then as soon as they do, they're like, ah, fuck, they get it. So my point being is that for artists who may be aware, they need to understand just what what the technology is, what it, what it, what it means. And it does not mean JPEGs. Fucking that is the last mm. thing it means. It means the underlying technology that underpins the JPEG, which is a smart contract. And the potential of being able to leverage smart contracts to help uh fund whether it's collections fund communities fund events fund projects that's that is the good shit and that is how that's what artists need to as rapidly as possible spend time just learning about and it the technology is there for them to leverage it now they can they can go and raise money they can go and drop an nft collection create an nft collection on like a solana nft collection um paying minimum fee, minimal fees to cr- do a do a collection create a collection that is a promotion for an event for an example say i'm you know i'm tom and i'm part of a band and we're playing we play every week at our local pub if you are a fan of the band we have an nft collection that gives you access to this event you don't have to pay an entry fee every week whatever like it's it's that simple like it's it's a way for it's a way for artists to finally have complete ownership of their commercialization which is that's that's the incredible that's the incredible part of that i also do have to say tom young's is a great artist name so if you do ever choose <laughs> as, as your next you already got the name so i'm just i'm just putting that into the universe yeah young tom That's young's <laughs> dude yeah so so well uh, it's, th- that is my my girlfriend laughed actually she saw my discord earlier well not my discord but she saw my discord username and it's young it's young tommy but obviously oh, really? young <laughs> yeah obviously obviously young with a uh it's y-u-n-g like young mm-hmm. like right 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 yeah, yeah. The cool um, way. The cool way, yeah, the cool way. And she was like, what the, f- what the fuck is that? <laughs> She's like, young Tommy. And I'm like, I was like, don't even ask. Don't ask. Uh, just my alter ego. Don't mind yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, just, just my alter ego. Uh, so yeah, I'm Tom, Tom Young's young Tommy. Um, whatever you want to call me. Love it. Um, so Tom, I just kind of want to backtrack a little bit uh, just before we kind of continue into this Web3 niche. Um, when you went to transitioning to start creating content on YouTube and, and like you mentioned, if you go back into your earlier videos, you can see that you had a very dynamic 
group of content from working out to kind of lifestyle and travel, what made you fall into this web three niche and not, and not explore those others? So, um, complete transparency web web three. Um, and this goes back to, again, the point about how fast things are moving things one of the biggest challenges that content creators face is an ideation for what they're going to create right it's like i wake up today fuck i need to come up with ideas the nft space as it stands is just a creator's heaven for for like what do i create on because there is news there's drama there's um fucking there's everything there's so many different angles there's uh, hacks tips strategies um there's uh platforms so many different angles that you can you can leverage within a channel and um that was the biggest thing that I, the biggest challenge that i found when i was the various points that i was creating content was okay i really enjoyed making that video on um, an event that happened in my life like I went traveling and I had this experience and I've wrapped it up in a video but then unless you're a travel vlogger who's doing that every day mm. right your content creation stream comes to an abrupt end because oh I'm not going on holiday for another three months <laughs> shit <laughs> mm -hmm. so um th that short you know short answer is we are here in a fast moving world uh which is a uh an, an the, the interest area that I have. So for me, I get up now and I'm excited to make content. Whereas previously when I was making content, trying, trying to make content, whether it was lifestyle vlogging, it was, it became too hard, too fast. Um, as you guys will know, and as any YouTube creator will know, and people that haven't made videos will not understand is that, uh, filming, editing, posting videos, on YouTube is extremely time consuming and very creatively draining. Um, and that's something that until you try to do it full time, you just don't appreciate. A hundred percent. Yeah. I, honestly, I'd love to like reiterate that point because it's so important. Um, I've, I mentioned to you, I've tried a bunch of different ideas and the show right now is we basically read Reddit stories and it's the same situation where it's like, you literally have this infinite cove of, of things and you do not have to create the idea yourself. That I think is like the most important thing because you have, everyone always hears, you have to be consistent as a creator. Well, if you're literally coming up with a new idea every day, you will get fatigue so damn fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I love the way you broke that down because it, it truly is so, so much easier to be able to create when you have a niche that supplies you the ideas like that. Diving into that a little deeper. Um, so, you know, there's, there's the ideas and then there's like, am I creating it for like search terms on YouTube? Am I doing this because it, you know, it's more of a gut feeling. How do you, how do you approach that? Are you more like technical? Like, okay, let me see if I can like get the traffic here. Or is it more of like, this just kind of feels like a hard hitting story. And I, my gut says to, to cover, how do you pick the specific ideas or content coming in? Yeah, really great question. I'm currently doing it off uh, a little bit of a little bit of both. So it is, um, mainly I would say 80% gut, um, uh, of what am I interested in right now? What am I looking into right now? And that feeds from a concept of as a creator and a lot of people talk about this, which is like, if you just create stuff that you would want to consume, there are going to be other people out there that will also be wanting to consume that stuff. And so at the moment, I would say the majority of my, my decision-making process on content creation is driven by my personal interests. Um, so projects that I find interesting projects that I think other people will find interesting projects that, uh, I think aren't getting as much coverage as they think they ought to. Um, because say, for example, everyone is obsessed with cute PFP JPEGs at the moment. And I'm like, 
like you guys do realize that's gonna f- fucking come to an end pretty soon once every type of cuddly fuck is cre- created it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like there is i mean we're seeing it we're seeing we're now seeing derivatives of derivatives and and it's like well when does it stop it's like the so i'm trying to focus on projects that offer unique utility um have different angles uh perhaps have got really interesting teams that are behind them have had experience creating big businesses or businesses that have had success um but in the back of my mind i'm also very aware and familiar of what is required to feed a youtube algorithm um at the moment i'm not focusing on that though i'm focusing on just consistency um consistently getting my kind of my 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 voice getting me as a uh, i suppose for one want for a better word as a brand being consistently uh consistently presented to my audience so that they get they feel attached to me um i'm not so that not every video i'm they're getting a different version of me it's getting them used to what who i am what i what i do um and i think that's how you get to build a an audience that is that feels connected that they they are they're like "Mm, i now have seen that this guy talks about breakfast every day uh he must really (laughs) like breakfast or whatever it is um or i might drop little bits here and there which is an insight into my life or how i live and those people they pick up on that maybe if it's subconsciously but they pick up on it and that's what helps them feel connected to you as a creator as a an artist whoever whatever you may be it's those small nuances that i think you have to you have to give those to your audience to let them feel like they really know you like a friend i suppose uh, and that's at the moment that's my my main focus is just consistency 100 percent. yeah it sounds that. like and and i think this is smart like it's essentially content market fit right it's like okay you're figuring out your voice in this space and everything else so it's like yeah. why overly optimize before you're it's kind of putting the cart before the horse a little bit mm-hmm. yeah and uh, that i'm I, you know i come from a science background right so i to some extent like numbers not hugely but i i'm aware <laughs> i'm i i understand how um i understand numbers uh, good with spreadsheets and so i'm 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 keeping an eye i'm keeping half an eye on what's going on when it comes to the analytics side um, i have a weekly newsletter and uh, that i drop every friday um, it's the what the flip friday newsletter so it's kind of weekly wrap up at the end of the week of things that have gone on um, projects to look out for uh, and i i i found that i can see all of the links that i have on my newsletter and I might have a, like 30 links in a newsletter and I can see the click through rates of all of those different links. And that gives me an, an understanding into, oh, OK, well, what is my audience? What are they really interested in? Because those links right. are those links are across four or five different t- categories. You know, some might be social links to other creators or artists. Some might be links to projects that have already minted or links to projects that are close to launching. Um, or news stories and i i've got this i'm building this bank of like really high quality data of what exactly my audience are interested in which is i find so i I personally i'm really interested in that but right now i'm like more focusing on the the content market fit like you said just being consistent love that going back to what you were just speaking on about audience and platform why did you choose youtube as your main platform and not something like TikTok? let's say great great question and um uh, one main reason is because i'm a youtube uh, i'm a youtube maxi just like a gary v maxi Mm -hmm. um so i've been been obsessed with youtube ever since it came out uh and that's i think that that feeds to my kind of short attention span um i like and and also it's for me it's like it's a th- it's something that allows my mind to wander wherever it wants to go and which is something that feels it just i don't know just to me that just feels 
having having a, some sort of ignition in your head that's like shit what does that mean or what is that and then it's like and then i go hear an expert talk about it and you're like fuck like you know it's, it's the the I, I was obsessed with encyclopedias as a child as as well as like the guinness book of records that i had you know those are two of the most opened books that i owned when i was a child and so i think that's just my how my mind works i just want to i love learning um uh, so youtube fits in really really well for that now question about tiktok um it, i've watched tiktok for the last uh, i suppose two years and whilst building a brand myself uh i was very again credit what well, credit's due uh, gary v was the guy two three years ago talking about tiktok being the next big thing and i was very much aware of that i wanted our business to invest into that that channel um but but covid made it very difficult to be able to create content um find content creators and be able to do that um but personally uh it is something that i've uh, i've been testing like i have been testing tiktok um what i found though is that it takes uh it takes uh, a lot more of a creative um creative computation i suppose like that's the, the way i put it. it it requires you to put more uh more of a creative kind of um it would be easier if i just said it was harder like i find it harder like for me for me um making i can make a 30 second tiktok video but it will take me an hour to create and i find it very very creatively taxing to 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 do that um knowing at the same time that i'm putting it onto a onto a platform that has that that really, uh, really values um, extremely fast-paced vi viral-like content. Uh, I mean, you guys will know yourself. Like, you go on it, and some of the shit that is on TikTok is fucking insane. Like uh, the stuff that my girlfriend with scrolls through. I'm like, that is just cr that's just crazy. Like crazy that it, that there are people out there making some of these videos, man um and it's so i I feel, I feel like tiktok is very 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 competitive i don't know that's just my my gut feeling is that it's very competitive and you're competing with people that have a very high skill set whereas youtube is although be although also competitive it gives people the opportunity to really feel connected to you like i like like i said whereas tiktok is like does it make me laugh? Does it make me smile? Does it make me sad? Does it make me angry? Yes, no, next. And YouTube, YouTube is not as more, has more depth than that. Um, and I think that just, so at the moment, I'm kind of like the, the investment it takes for me psychologically and mentally to create TikToks, it isn't worth the effort for me because it takes away from my focus at the moment, which is YouTube. 100%. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I also, and just to touch back real quick, I loved your idea of like using what people are checking out on the newsletter as kind of like a gauge of where your audience's interest is because like YouTube can suggest a video. So it's sometimes maybe not the best like barometer of like what people are interested in as, as much as like what the algorithm is pushing. So I just wanted to like emphasize that I love that idea and whatever like I'm sure every creator has their own version of that, that they can say like, what are people commenting on? Like what's, what's the true indicator of like where their community's interests are. So I love that. I, I just on that, like it's, it, it's always, and this is from people that I've followed for the last like five, 10 years, you know, when we talked about how I feel like I'm at a point where I'm kind of able to deploy different skill sets and different tactics. Um, I would definitely, if, if your audience, if there are people out there who um, are looking to create an audience and if they're looking to help nurture a community, uh, I would highly consider um, using a newsletter as a way to connect with your audience. But also, like you said, it gives, it gives you access to a higher level of quality of information about what they're interested in. Um, and also long term, like if you're stretching this out five, 10 years, you know, a list of 100,000 emails is fucking valuable like 
that's the, like so starting that early getting connected with your community um you know um it, it takes for me it takes me a couple of hours to put together i actually really enjoy it it's like one of my most fun things that i do each week is curating this uh, newsletter for my community helping them feel like they're getting to know me a bit better sharing like my music passions whatever it may be um so yeah just a lot of benefits to that so if, if for those out there who are maybe listening or watching this um definitely consider starting hell yeah um and Love we're that. we're moving uh to the to the closer here You've pretty much you've given I think creators a lot of different nuggets and tools from which to you know build their own content. But as a closer, I'd love to kind of like tie a bow on that. Uh, if you were starting from scratch, you didn't have your you know close to a million views uh, dental video and 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 all this <laughs> stuff. Uh, what's kind of the short list of how you would approach having if if you had not created any content starting today? Yeah, I, I, I'll be I'll be honest with you. It's very difficult for me to to put myself in that in that mindset. I know this is a bit mm. maybe a bit of a cop out. I'll try to give some some advice though. Um, I feel like I was very fortunate in that this coincided with the time where I had developed a skill set to edit videos, which is, as you guys will know, is not easy. Um, takes a lot of time. It is an investment um, in learning how to do that. My one of the and uh, this is the nugget that I'll give to your to your user base. One of the best YouTube channels out there for starting content creation is a channel called Think Media. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it. There's it, it, it's it, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's Sean guy, Channel, Sean Cannell, like Sean Cannell, yeah. yeah, Sean Cannell. And he has been um, doing a channel on how to get into creating YouTube videos for the past like nearly ten years now. Um, I think his channel has been very specific for the past five years, but it his uh, his um, his kind of main thing is you just have to start. You just have to start, and it is the the kind of like his recommendation is you just start and you don't put any thought into anything other than just making a video so don't worry about search engine optimization don't worry about uh keywords don't worry about anything all of the bullshit just start start making videos consistently daily just doing it um, and doing it on a subject that you're interested in passionate about and just 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 start um that's the best that's the best advice i can give and you know that's coming from someone who he that's his 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 profession is helping people get start but you know like the old wayne gretzky thing you don't you know you you need to take a shot mm -hmm. before you get the you know before you actually um actually make things happen um uh what was it i literally i was like that bl blank there it's like you miss 100 percent of the shots that you don't take right yeah yeah um, yep. so um just start uh and the and the rest the way I think about skills, um, you have to think about uh, your journey as a skill skill stacking. That is the way I think of it. So, your first skill is like, okay, well, I'm just going to use my phone, my iPhone, to create a bit to film me, and then it's like I can edit, I can make it shorter or longer just using my phone. The next thing is, okay, well, how do I use uh, a, a desktop-based software to help to make it shorter? shorter or longer or whatever edit clips how do i sp split clips then the next skill is like okay well my audio sounded a bit shit there like what do i need to do to get my audio to sound a bit better maybe i can get myself a little mic that plugs into my phone and it's it, but that needs to be like the way i heard it heard about it was like every every video just try and make it one percent better next time the next and it's the incremental gains um compounds that the compounds over time don't try and be a hero all at once you're not going to be um steven spielberg like after a week you're gonna need to work your way up one percent better every video and then you'll make it Amen. i love it so much great insight tom thank you so much man and and one of the biggest things obviously through created what we want to do is give 
creators not only a platform to gain insight into the creator economy and, and how to be a creator for themselves, but also allow this to be a platform for creators themselves. So tell us what you got going on. We'd love to hear for all the people. What's what's up in Tom world? What Where are we going? The best place to find out the answers is just making sure you like come and follow my journey. Um, so come and follow me on Twitter. Um, I'm at the Tom Young's and also uh, I think it's Tom Young's channel on YouTube. Um, those are the two main places we're going to be able to find out what I'm doing. And at the moment, I'm keeping things nice and fluid. Like we said, this space is moving very fast. Um, my focus at the moment is just meeting cool people uh, and creating consistently. That's all I'm focusing on at the moment. I think it's a wrap. Tom, thank you so, so much Cheers, for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, like uh, I absolutely loved it. Loved it.